Right guys, how's it going? Basically today what we're going to be doing is changing the rear uh, brake discs and pads on the vehicle of my VF, uh, Fiesta ST, as you all know I got Fiesta ST. So yeah, first of all, let's check out what we're going to be using for the car. Let's jump straight into it. So what we're going to need is a 13mm socket with a ratchet here. Um, and then basically after that, you're going to want to get yourself some white, uh, white grease just to stop yourself everything from rusting up. Good stuff that is. You can also use liquid buffer to butt clean off your caliper. Um, use oil, pen oil and stuff like that. And then you're going to want some metal grease to put on your um, pads yourself. Um, we're going to use this to prise off the calipers later on in the video, as you will see. And then basically, obviously, you're going to want to have some uh, blue, uh, blue roll or something like that to clean up the calipers as well. So let's move straight into the video here. So what we're going to do is there is four bolts on the back of the caliper. Uh, the 13 mil bolts, all of them. So thanks Ford. It's pretty good for Ford doing that for us. It's 13 mil all around. There's loads of 13 mil bolts on like any of the stuff like that. So you get your ratchet um, and get your 13. And so we're taking off the um, the carrier bolts here, not the caliper ones. If my arm gets out of the way, so you look and see. So yeah, we're taking off the um, the uh, carrier bolts here. Just waiting to see what I've just done. There we go. Back again. So yeah, take the taking of uh, 30, it's 30 mil socket using it, and we're taking off the uh, carrier bolts right now. Now they were a bit tight. Um, don't worry if they are a bit tight when doing yours. Um, just give it a bit of force, and it should come loose, like so. Um, the top one is pretty. Well, it was a bit hard, but you know, as I went along, it was relatively easy enough to do. And then, like as I said, the bottom ones should probably will be the same, but. But yeah, um, they're quite small bolts and they've got Loctite already on the um on the thread itself, which was handy. So I don't have to put any more Loctite on. Um, here we are going on to the bottom bolt. Now there is um another set. No, what am I about? This is not the bolts for the carrier. I apologise. That was my fault. This is the bolts for the um caliper itself, which uh which are basically held on by. There's another bolt right in front of that, which is a long like a long um long slider bolt. I set long slider bolt. And um, basically, um, the long, long slider bolts do come out, which we will go to in a minute. But this is the, this is the um, caliper bolts. I apologise, it is the caliper bolts, not the carrier bolts. We'll move on to the carrier bolts in a minute, which is just behind, which I think we're about to go do now. We are. So both the bolts, um, both the bolts itself, the carrier ones and the caliper ones, are very, were very tight, but then they have to be. So make sure when you do do them up later on in the video, um, or later on when you're doing them yourself, you do them up really tightly. So... Basically here we are, like as you can see, they're a bit tight to get off. Once you get them going, they're they're fine. Um, also as well, you will see later on that I do clean out the caliper really well. That's one thing you've got to make sure you do when taking off the caliper, and um doing it all. Make sure you clean the carrier, the caliper, because the carrier is probably one of the main things. I know you got to clean your caliper as well, but obviously your carrier is carrying the um pads themselves. And as you can tell by this video, the uh, the pads and well, the, you can't really see the pads yet, but the discs are absolutely hanging. So here we are moving on to the second bolt of uh, the carrier bolt. Now this this one was a bit more tighter, so I'd put quite a lot of force into this one, but I did eventually get it off. So don't worry about you know rounding them off. They do round off these but um these bolts. They are quite easy to round off, but don't worry about it. Just take your time doing it, and you will be fine getting them off. Now handy for me, I was able to do this, you know, around people that knew a lot about brakes, as I wasn't like hugely good on brakes themselves. Um, it is pretty similar for the front caliper as well. Just obviously there will be something different in a minute, which I will talk to you guys about, which we're going to go straight into in a second. So yeah, that's the bolts off. Moving on next, we are going to head and prize off the caliper. Uh, prize off the caliper. This was with the help of my friend who came over and just told me how to do this bit. Obviously, yeah, I got a prize of caliper off because it was on quite tight. Um, but like, it would probably be the same taking the caliper off for you guys. So once you've got the caliper off, um, it's pretty straightforward. They are just literally like, as you see, the bits coming off the top there. That is the little rubber, um, little rubber bits there at the top was for the uh, long, long thread bolts. Um, so yeah, as the caliper off, uh, the carrier is on the floor. So here we go. This is a bit I'm on about. So basically, what you will get is like a wind up tool. Um, because obviously when you're when you've got your foot down on a brake and you've got your handbrake on, there's obviously the bit that pushes the pads in to the um, disc itself, and that's the bit you have to push back in using one of these turn-up tools. Um, relatively easy to use. Just Every time you just twist it, you've got to twist the, um, the silver bit, which you'll see me in a minute doing the other way, just to keep it tight so it doesn't come off. Whereas if you're with a front caliper, if you're doing this, you won't have to use this tool. You could just use a set of swan necks just to um, clamp it down and then just push it in like that. It's a lot easier using them, but obviously you have to use this tool for when you're using the rear discs. 
uh, with rear the calipers, I mean. So, yeah, that's pretty much that. I just took a fair amount of time doing this. So, whilst I'm doing this, I'll just talk about to you guys quickly about um, why, you know, ensuring your calipers have got to stay clean. That's your main thing, honestly. I You'll see in a minute, I had a major difficulty with my um, long uh, long threadless bolts, which are the on the which are on the um carrier itself and basically what happened was um well actually we're moving on to the next part of the video here so yeah once you're taking it off this uh this oh the, the little roller um basically what you want to do is get a set of mole grips and undo that bit because it was quite tight on and you know it took a while for me to get it off but yeah basically after that you are basically all good to go. You can take the disc off as we just took there and that thing was in absolute state, like I said before. And then, yeah, the caliper's hanging low. You can just leave the caliper just as it is now because you're not really going to need that until later on. So we're going to move over to a vice clamp here. Um, bring bring your carrier over. Now, this is one thing you're going to want to do because obviously you carry in your, um, your brake pads within this. So obviously the little grooves that you'll see me in a minute um, using a wide brush on and a flat head on, those bits you want to keep clean. So I use a liquid buffer on that and obviously the wire brush and the flathead itself. Now the reason for that being is because it can cause, you know, a little corrosion can come up and there's bits of rust that can come up on it. And you wanna make sure they sit in really snug when you're um, putting the pads in. So yeah, we're just basically going through doing that. Um, one thing whilst, one thing I could talk about to you guys was like about these long thread bolts. So these long, these bolts here that are on the um, end of the carrier, there is one bolt on each side those got stuck um basically the reason they got stuck is because of how much shit got clogged up inside it was all rusted out so we had to um spend a bit of time getting that out so that's why we cut out a fair bit of the video um i, I should have shown you guys really how to do that um but what we did was we banged the nuts out and uh, basically gave them a good clean because obviously they're threadless so they just they should be sliders they should slide in and out really really easily but they just didn't so but yeah, we got we got there in the end and we cleaned them all out and they were pretty easy to do. So hopefully this video so far has shown you guys how to um, change your brake pads and discs on your car. Um, like I said, it is relatively easy once you know what you're doing. Obviously, I've done this a few times now, mainly on front calipers, but you know, it's a bit different to do it on the back. So that's the end of that cleaning up process. We're going to move back to the calipers um, right now. So we're going to put the discs on now. Um, what you want to do here is basically the, the disc is covered in a bit of oil. So we, what we got is with some liquid buffer again, blue roll, just went around the disc itself and cleaned it off so that, you know, basically next time, um, you know, it's not as slippery when you're breaking when you're back on when you're back on a road and stuff like that. It's a lot easier to use. So yeah, we're gonna just pop the disc back on. They're really, they're really easy. Um, don't worry if they're not gonna be held in place. Basically, what happens is your wheel holds it in place. It will be a bit wobbly when you get to the, when you get the carrier and the caliper back on itself, but the disc will be a bit wobbly for now, just basically because it's held on by the um wheel when you bolt it back on later on in the video. So yeah, moving on. So now what we do once we've got a disc on is we want to bolt the uh, carrier back on. So you want to get your two big longer bolts and then pop it into place, which we will do in just a second. And then once you've got it in place, you can basically, um, you have got to do a little bit of fiddling. You just want to get it back on. You do want to get it back on in place. Uh, make sure you do hold the carrier and do up the do up the bolt at the same time. Don't do them all. Don't do one fully up. Obviously you'll have a bit of a problem doing them up, but uh, make sure you do like both of the bolts in place and then do them up a little bit and then just like use your ratchet to do them up a bit more and then once they get tighter and tighter just you know work in between both of them like that so you see, as you can see me here this is me just doing up the uh, carrier bolts and then we can move on to the um to the caliper bolts themselves in a minute so yeah this is just moving on to the part where we did have a bit of a technical difficulty um this is the part where we actually yeah, put the carrier back on and realised the um, technical situation on this part. Got his Nemo cup out. Ah. You were saying technical difficulty, but I cut that bit out. So yeah, we went across and done all that, sorted it all out. Um, this is why they're all looking really yucky right now. Don't worry, I've got some liquid buffer and sort it out. So yeah, we're popping the the the, the um carriers now all in. Make sure you do your bolts up, like I said, and then we're popping the pads in themselves now. Now, you see those little clips on the end? You want to put them up a bit because I did make a mistake. Um, I did go back and change it, though. Don't worry, after this video, I did change it. It was only because my mate realised and he told me. 
but basically yeah those clips want to be up a bit more so that basically when you put the caliper on you do not want to like see the, those silver clips at all you don't want to see them poking out as you will see in a minute i one of mine were poking out so make sure you look make sure you guys don't make that same mistake as well um and yeah, once that's done, we can go ahead and get the caliper back on. Now, as you can see, they're on a little, um, at the top there, you can see the, that is where the slider bolts are. Now, they are sliding very well. That's the reason why they need to slide is so that we can get the caliper back on because you need to pull them inwards and then basically put, put the caliper um, over it so you can bolt it in properly. Um, make sure you do hold it in place. And like I said, again, do not go ahead and um tighten up one of them as tight as you can because you're not gonna be able to get the one other one on so yeah once that's on um and all in properly which i'm about to do here i had a bit of a problems doing the second one which was on the bottom so what i did was um i got down and went behind it um went behind the disc and caliper itself so it was a lot easier for me to get some more leverage and then I could get the bolt in myself. So here you go. I was putting it in hand tight here. Um, ignore how crap my gloves look. They're just really old gloves that I was, I was using today. Um, I'm getting some new ones soon. But as you can see here, it's quite fiddly doing it. But yeah, moving on now, we're moving on to this bottom bolt that I've just done. So basically, yeah, I've done the first bolt. Um, I did it up to finger tight and I'm doing the second depth bolt down below finger tight. And then after that, you basically, you can, you can just um, use it. Use a, um, just tighten it up. There you go. The sockets out there. It's relatively easy to do. Just give it a tight. Make sure you do do them tight as well because this is your main bolts. You want to get tight. Um, make sure those carrier bolts are really, really tight. So here we're moving on to absolutely actually tightening on to the, um, the caliper bolts properly now. So what you want to do is get some mole grips again. And on the slider bolts, the slider bolt, you want to make sure that one's held in whilst you're doing the um, whilst you're doing the carrier bolt up because it will move around whilst you're doing it. So make sure you've got the mole grips on it. And once the mole grips on it, you should be able to tighten it up relatively easily. Um, but yeah, like I said, the Ford bolts, most of the Ford bolts on the on the car, like doing the um doing the oil, uh, oil plug and that was thirty mil and stuff like that. So it's relatively easy, like I said, no no problems whatsoever. Um yeah, here's me just moving the mold grips down just so I can get the other bolt as well in a second. But I did really go as tight as I could for these because you know, don't go getting like a torque wrench and setting it to so many newton meters of torque because you're bound to get it wrong unless you got auto data. Um, but yeah, you, honestly, I'll just go by how, how like tightness you had. I mean, you could go, you can do it properly using auto data, but I didn't in the end um, because like, I know it's I know it was tight enough, and I got someone to check for me if it was tight enough as well. Yeah, so here's me doing the bottom one up. Um, like I said, relatively easy. Um, so far in the video, if you've got up this fast, if you got to this part of the video so far, then you're doing really good. Um, it did take me take me a while to do my rear caliper because this is the first time doing my my own calipers on my car. But like I said, hopefully if you follow the steps within this video, you should be able to do it yourself um, relatively easy with some tools at home and some liquid, like liquid buffer and like you can buy online relatively easily, relatively easy from like tip top and stuff like that. So yeah, basically that's it. Um, I just did go over them again just to double check because like I said, you do want to go over them and make sure they are really, really tight or else you will have problems. Um, caliper can come loose. I mean, even after a few days, if you still like, you know, like, a bit worried about it you can get back under it and just take the wheel off and tighten them up again if you feel they need tighten up that's just to check if they do need tightening up at all but um yeah like i said i just went over them again just to double check just to make sure they were really really tight so, and I, as you can see i've got a bit more of leverage in there i was able to tighten them a bit more now it does look like i'm sort of going to snap the fuck, snap the bolt here but i didn't it was just because i was i had the socket in the wrong way So yeah, once that's done, that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's that's you guys done now. Thumbs up. If you got that far, then well done to you lot. It did take me a while. So after that's done, you want to go ahead and bolt your wheel on, obviously. And then once you're in the car and got it started up, make sure you pump your brakes straight away. Don't even take off the handbrake or anything. Like that. Pump your brakes. And then, you know, you'll be all good to go. So hopefully that tutorial has helped you out for you guys. Um, if it hasn't, then I'm sorry, but this is for a Fiesta ST. Hopefully, it's just for a normal Fiesta as well, but I'm not too sure. But as you can see, here's the pads and discs afterwards. They're in really, really bad condition. And yeah, they're, you know, they're horrible. And I was so glad I changed my rear pads and discs. 
but yeah i did use brambo pads and discs if any of you guys wanted to know so yeah thanks for watching guys hope you've enjoyed this video hope it's been helpful towards you lot um like i said all the parts at the beginning is the parts i use that's all you're gonna need and we have got another video coming out soon so stay tuned for that guys subscribe like and comment and yeah make sure you check out everything out in the description below i will see you all in the next video bye bye for now see you later